Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up? Winning Cures Everything, college football preview show for week number four. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. We do a pick em contest over there every week. We have had three big-time winners all get Tunica Prize packs. You can go sign up for that again this week. We've already got the lines up. They're already rocking and rolling. Get over there. Get yourself entered. All it takes is an email and a couple of minutes of your time to fill out some multiple-choice questions. So head over to winningcureseverything.com. Check that out. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for us. Tell us whether you like or don't like. Uh, tell us if you agree, if you don't agree. Tell us what your picks are. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong, etc. All of those wonderful things. Leave some comments on the YouTube videos. Click like if you would. Hit subscribe if you would. Share the show out with your buddies. Tell them about it. It's word of mouth. That's how you grow. That's how you... That's how you do things, right? We do, we do appreciate all the fans, yes. all the people watching, all the people listening and uh, and sharing it out. It means a lot. It really does. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you leave a nice five-star review. Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, whatever your favorite podcast app is, we're on it. Just go look for Winning Cures Everything. Obviously, if you're listening to this, you've already found it, so... Congratulations. But yeah, hit subscribe for us. Share that thing out. The show, every week, every show, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. Was just down at them last weekend. Wonderful, wonderful places. You can find more information on them. You can make some decisions about what you want to do while you're down there, etc. Go to tunicatravel.com. Help yourself out. Get down to the Delta. So... We got some big games this week. We do have some big games. Last week, mm, okay. No, we got some big boy games. But but this week, we got some big boy games. And, I mean, there's some of these that last week would have been the headliner. And this week, they're like three, four down the run. Correct. I mean, just, just ridiculous. Uh, you ready to go on a fire into them? Come on. Let's do this thing. We don't want to take up too much of your time. Game number one. Notre Dame at Georgia, number seven versus number three. Georgia, a 14-point favorite down in Athens. Total of 56, 7 p.m. on CBS. It's at Sanford Stadium down in Georgia. Notre Dame has not been a double-digit underdog in the regular season since USC in 2016. Before that, it was 2013. Now, obviously, they were like 11-point dogs to Clemson last year, but, man... It's a lot of points. This is a ton they, of points. They are separated by four spots in the rankings, and they are a wide margin based on what Vegas thinks. Notre Dame's defensive line averages weighing like 276 to 280 pounds. That's their average for their defensive line. Georgia's offensive line averages like 340. Notre Dame's defense gives up on average. Now, they've only played, what, two games now? That's right. They, they have been giving up 240 yards rushing a game. Georgia averages 287 rushing. Now, the big difference here is Ian Book and that offense have been making some big-time plays. Sure. And they're, the wide receiver core looks good. They got playmakers, and obviously we don't know who these guys are yet, but they are fast, and they can make some plays down the field. So the question will be, can Georgia's defense slow down their offense? Because I don't think that Notre Dame's defense can slow down Georgia's. So, how are you leaning on this? Like, hey, let's let's go ahead and get into the, the, the pick section of this. I would really like to see George, uh, Notre Dame have a good show in here. I, I don't think we're going to get it. No, I think Georgia is really – I think Georgia may be the best team in college football this year. Yeah, they could be. I am. I am about ready. They could be to, to say that Georgia's going to win the SEC. Yeah, like I mean, I, they could. I I feel really good about that. Uh, I know this. Their side of the fence. The, I mean, the East they is, should they should moonwalk to to Atlanta. Yeah, there's going to be a fist fight on the West. 
Yeah, and Georgia still got to play at Auburn. Nope, you're right. But, but that's that's just that's one big game. I still think that they are heads and shoulders better than than Auburn. I, no, um, you're probably right. No, I don't. I don't know that I disagree with that. Yeah, uh, I am going to take Georgia minus the fourteen here. I think I, if I had to lay it, I'd lay it. All right, so we're we're both rolling Georgia here. I I would like to see a close game. I mean, this was close, you know, in South Bend two years ago. I mean, it was a one-point game, but that was right when Georgia was coming on the scene. You know, there was there was a lot to that. Uh, but, man, Georgia just looks like the ridiculously better team right now. That's right. Just ridiculously better. All right, let's move into game number two. Michigan at Wisconsin. Wisconsin, a three-and-a-half-point favorite. It's in Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, 11 a.m. on Fox. The total is 43. Super low total. Makes perfect sense. But man, these these Fox big noon kickoffs already driving me nuts. All right, it, it's, it's great. It's fine. It's fun. You know, because you, as soon as you get out of the, the pregame show, it's like, all right, turn off game day. I Turn like Fox. it because usually the first set of games are boring, and because I'm already watching pregame and I haven't really gotten into like a big honeydew list, like I get a lot of the early game to watch, and then after about you know the end of that game, I start getting the the eyes in the back of the head saying, "You're just gonna sit on your ass all day? Are you Thank gonna do something?" And then yeah, now I, I start <laughs> missing some of the bigger games to try to make some appeasements in the house. I'm not upset with it. Of course, I'm not the one that has to wake up and be ready to, to, to go to a fist fight at 11 in the morning. Yeah. Okay? I, so I, that's not my problem. My problem is, is I get to wake up and I get to watch a really good football team, and then I might have to go do some crap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I, can, I can see where you're coming from with that. So I'm not mad at it. Uh, I just I feel like Camp Randall at night for this game. Oh, well, that's a been, different conversation, though. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. they're, they're turning these yeah. Big Ten... Uh, whatever, Big 12 games into these 11 a.m. games, and it's just, it kind of makes it feel less big, which I think could help Michigan in this spot. Oh, uh, yeah, if you're the road team, you absolutely 100%. want this game at, at noon. My, at some point in time, I'm going to end up at Camp Randall at night. Yeah, It's just really hard when they don't have like a set schedule and we say this game going to be played at 6.30, 7 o'clock. Yeah, I need I need that to happen so I could schedule vacation. Jim Harbaugh, one of only two coaches, he and Tom Allen, to have coached at least six games as an underdog and never win one outright at their school. He's two and four against the spread as an underdog, but he's never won one outright. Michigan, they hammered. Wisconsin last year. That's right. They sure did. And I don't think Wisconsin is going to forget about that. Uh, Wisconsin ranked number one in the country in team efficiency, number eight in offense, number one in defense. Michigan ain't that. They have not looked cohesive yet. Uh, there are chemistry issues on offense. Josh Gaddis's play calling and whatnot, very suspect so far. I mean, do you, do you trust Harbaugh here? So before the season started, we both, we both was shocked the hell out of me that you had Michigan going 12 and 0. Now I, I will say this: I Michigan, had Michigan going 12 and 0. Defensive efficiency, as far as SP plus numbers, they've got Michigan number one defense in the country right now. Yep. Now that surprise me. It, it's a little questionable, because when I look at it, I'm like, okay, maybe they're seeing something I'm not. Because this, it doesn't look like the number one defense. But when you look at the numbers and the the success rate and and everything else, as far as you know, team efficiency, Wisconsin is number one in team efficiency and defensive efficiency. But SP plus defensive efficiency, Michigan is number one. So all of these analytics that like, I tend to trust, right? Because it it has to do with the things that really matter. They cut out the garbage time, which there hasn't been a lot for Michigan here lately. Uh, there has been for Wisconsin. But it cuts out all the all the crap, and it just points At to... At what point in time do they cut out the garbage time when Wisconsin is beating people 79 to nothing? 
Well, here's the deal. So, so where does garbage time start? Because when it's 35 to nothing in the second quarter, do in, they start? Do they say, okay, everything else is just trash? In the first quarter, and because I, I heard Bill Conley talking about this, in the first quarter, it is if you go up by 43 points in the first. So basically, okay. the entire first quarter matters, right? Okay. Second quarter, if you are up by 36 points. Then it drops down to like 29 points in the third and then 21 points in the fourth. So for Wisconsin, basically the second half of every game hasn't mattered. Has not mattered. And the issue is like they are consistent. Like they do not want you to score on them. And if they bring that same kind of fire to this game with how Michigan's offense has looked, one, if Shea Patterson can't hold on to the football, it's over. Whew, this is going to be a give, long day. You give them a short field, it's over. So, so I'm, I'm going to give you my pick. I'm going to give you my pick. Good. I, I originally had Wisconsin going 12-0. I mean, Michigan going 12-0. Yeah. I originally had them winning the the Big Ten and making it to the playoff. Saw two weeks of football from both of these teams. I think Wisconsin's one of the best teams in the country, and I think Wisconsin has a I think they win the game. I think they cover. I think there's a chance they beat their ass. Now, I don't know what, what, what is beat the money their ass. Like on this? Uh, it's probably pretty even. I'm a... I'm no, it's not even. 71%, 71. on Wisconsin. That's not, I mean, that's not crazy, though. No. It doesn't, it doesn't get scary until you get in the 80s. Well, the, the re, I don't think it'll get in the 80s because it's Michigan, right? But I'm just saying, it doesn't get scary until it gets in the 80s. There, there are no statistics that you can learn from 70 points, 70% of one way or the other. Man. My eyes have told me that it is Wisconsin. And I think that is, that's one of my biggest problems as a better, right, is going against what you have seen and saying, ah, but maybe there's something fluky going on here. Look, like, I like Jim Harbaugh. I'm one of the few people in the world – that actually like Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, I I believe in him. I've been a defender of his since he's been there. I think he's a really good coach. My biggest problem is is I've watched Shea Patterson play football at Ole Miss, and I've watched Shea Patterson play football at Michigan, and I don't know that this is a Harbaugh situation. I think Harbaugh, and we've had this conversation on the show before. Yeah, I think all of Harbaugh's flaws at Michigan have been he has not had a trigger man. Yeah. And I don't think he still does in Shea Patterson. Yeah, you're probably right. That's that's where my belief comes in of making my pick is he is still struggling to find a quarterback there. Look, look I've been an LSU fan my whole life. I know what this is like. Great football teams hindered because you have an anchor. You have a dead weight just pulling your team down by its throat because you, you don't have the right guy with the Understood. football every snap. There's no coaching that can fix that. If you don't have the dude that can do it, you can't teach him to do it. Yeah, I'm a roll Wisconsin too. Wisconsin I could be wrong. Three and a half. I could be wrong. I don't think you are this time. But but I'm just I'm just saying I I don't believe in Shea Patterson. They make the move, they put in McCaffrey, and McCaffrey does some crazy stuff. Then all bets are off, and I got to see what I'm looking at. Yeah, I mean but, that's that's a good point. That's but good I point. don't believe in Patterson. Game number three. Uh, Auburn at Texas A&M. Now, A&M is a four-point favorite here. The total is 48. A little low, it seemed like. Yep. 2.30 p.m. on CBS, Kyle Field and College Station. Until last season, the road team had won every matchup dating back to 2012, and then Auburn got the win at home last year. Under Jimbo Fisher, A&M is 7-1 and against the spread, 8-0 straight up as a home favorite. The only non-cover was against LSU in that seven-overtime game last year when they were favored by three, and they only won by two. Yep. Should have lost the game. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think I like Jimbo in this spot. I'm staying as far away from this game as possible. I, um... Because I, yeah, really, I, mean, I, I'm not, I, I really like both of these teams... I, I'm going to watch every second of this game. I like both these teams. I like both these programs and what they're doing. And and I have no earthly idea. Yeah, normally I would just take the home team. I would probably, in this situation, just take the team catching points. You give me more than a field goal, I'll take Auburn. 
you want to talk about a a beautiful setup of football, you got the next game we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, well, the last game, Utah-USC on Friday night, late. And then you've got Michigan-Wisconsin at 11 a.m. you got Auburn-Texas A&M at 2.30. you got Notre Dame-Georgia at 7. And on your other TV, you can have Oklahoma State-Texas. I, I was going to say, I might, I'm going to need another game at 7 o'clock. Yeah, you got you got Oklahoma State Texas. Because as much as I want Notre Dame to be good, that game could be over at halftime, and I'm gonna be pissed off if nothing else is there to watch. Like you just flip it over to ABC. Uh, I'm gonna go with A and M here. I, I think at some point, Bo Nix is going to look like a freshman, and I think A and M has the dudes to be able to score some points on that Auburn defense. I, I just don't I don't understand you're enamored with him being a freshman. When 80% of college football right now are true freshmen or redshirt freshmen doing incredible things. It's just they, all over the sport. They can do incredible things, but they also have their moments where they look like freshmen. That's right. But okay, that's fine. Yeah, I, just don't, I, just don't, I just don't understand this argument when you look at half of the sport is nothing but true freshmen doing big things. I'm not saying that he can't do big things. I'm saying that at some point, it will rear its ugly head, and you're going to see mistakes made. Okay. That's and I fine. think that first game— But I think every quarterback does that. First game— I think every quarterback has that issue, problem, or possibility. First game on the road for him in this spot. I think— that this will be the first game that he's played where the crowd hasn't been almost I'm, 100% I'm not, behind not. I'm not knocking your pick, and you could absolutely be right. I, I just don't understand your logic because it's only Auburn where you really nitpick the, the freshman quarterback. But everybody else is starting a freshman quarterback, and you talk about how great they play and, 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 and the position that they take their team to when they make these big-time drives to, to compete and, and to do big things. I just don't understand the consistency. That's all. That's who, who? Well, we talked up Kentucky and their situation. We've talked up South Carolina and how good their quarterback looks. Like, there are multiple quarterbacks that are true freshmen. The the, the kid at Bay, uh, Boise State, I, like, I just don't I don't yeah, know at but, what but, point but, in time do you need to see a freshman be really good and say, you know what, maybe Auburn's freshman is good too. Like, I, but, own, I own my biases, okay? I have no problem. I know I'm not letting you talk right now. Yeah. But, I have, but I have no problem whatsoever saying – I hate this team. I'm picking against them. I'm not going to give you some bullshit reason why I think this is this and this is that. No, I'm just going to tell you, I don't like their ass. No, because if I thought that Auburn was better than Texas A&M, I would pick them to win the game. Okay. Like, that's that's just how it is. Okay. Uh, as far as other freshmen, you brought up Kentucky. That kid is not a freshman. He's a freaking senior. Like, it, I'm... He came from Troy. He's a grad transfer. So, no, I'm not going to talk about him in a big-time freshman situation. But there have been multi multiple freshmen. But, but uh, Hank from Boise State, uh, we haven't talked about his his other games because he hadn't played anybody else. He had a big-time spot against Florida State, and that's against a terrible-ass defense, right? Like it, What Florida State has shown is they are awful. But, yeah, Bachmeyer had an absolutely awful game against Marshall. The week after, at home. Like, yes, freshmen are going to have their spots. We didn't really recap a bunch about USC and BYU, but we did bring up on the recap that BYU confused him and actually made him look like a freshman. So, yes, I have criticized these freshman quarterbacks. So, this pick is not a biased okay. pick. Okay. This pick is, I think Texas A&M is still a really good team. I do too. Nobody has believed I picked them to win the SEC this year. And I think that they so. are at home here going to be able to handle Auburn. Okay. And I think one of the reasons is because of the quarterback. Okay. I think that Kellen Mond is a better quarterback than Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix will make a mistake that will cost him the game. That doesn't mean he's not good. All that means is I think he's a freshman going on the road, playing in front of 105,000 people that don't like him for the first time ever. Yeah, he might be really bad. I, like uh, he, I said. he may be great for most of the game, but he can have one absolutely crippling turnover. It's like Kirk Cousins, right? He's 
an NFL quarterback. He's pretty good. But in high pressure situations, but we've got years of seeing Kirk being that. We've got years of seeing James being that. You, you've never seen this kid make that mistake. So yeah, you but just don't know. This is just a prediction. This is just okay. a. That's like, fine. It's what I think is going to happen. It's okay. And and you and I both have been wrong about these things before, and I will absolutely be wrong again. But that is why I'm making this pick. I'm going A and M minus the four. Jesus Christ! Am I? <laughs> and you're going Auburn plus uh, plus the four. Are you taking Auburn to win? No, take A&M to win. Take A&M to win. All right. Now that we've gone through that. Game number four. (laughs) Oklahoma State at Texas. Texas minus five and a half. Texas is number 12 in the country. Oklahoma State is not ranked, but by God, I feel like they probably should be. The total is 73 in this game. 6.30 p.m. on ABC at Royal Memorial Stadium. In Austin, Texas, everybody talks about Tom Herman with the underdog numbers, and he's so good as an underdog. And da 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 da. da. Texas, five and one straight up and against the spread in their last six as a favorite by less than a touchdown. However, Oklahoma State, seven and one against the spread, six and two straight up in their last eight as a dog. The two losses were to Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. Five and one straight up in their last six against Texas. They have won four straight. And God, all week long, I wanted to take Texas. Since the line came out, I was like, I feel like Texas is probably the better team. But man, the more I look at this, the more I think, I think Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy doesn't, is, he doesn't like Herman. And he's not afraid of Herman or Texas. No. Tried to no, fight him last year after this game. At their, their quarterback, Spencer Sanders, absolutely ridiculous. Real good. Wallace, the wide receiver. Oh, every, year, the every year they're going to have a big wide receiver coming uh, out of nowhere. And Shuba Hubbard. And I was just about to say. Yep. No. Man. Now, Sam Ellinger. Sam is Sam is a stud. We have talked about him yeah. on our show. He is great. This I will say this. I do think that this game will be more fun to watch than Georgia Notre Dame. There's no question that this will be the game I'll be watching. I'm going to tell you this. I, Sam Sam is the best player on the football team. I'll he, take, I think he's probably the best player on the field. Well, just okay, overall. on the field. That's fine. But, That's what I meant. No, but he, he'll be the best player Saturday night on the, on the field. I'll take the other three over the best three Texas has got. If I get a right. combination of the best running back, the best receiver, and the best, best quarterback— I, I will take OKC, uh, uh, yeah, OKC, Oklahoma State, and and uh, <laughs> and Mike Gundy. It's, I'm 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 rolling the same way as you. I like Gundy here. I I think if it is like this, this he's looks just, like a field goal game. He just right? has Texas's number. Yeah, and he's not afraid of Herman, and he doesn't like Herman. And Gundy just seems to be able to get under people's skin. I'm going to assume that you're taking Oklahoma State. I'm going to take Oklahoma State. I can understand it. I, man, you think this goes over the 73? That I don't think either one of these defenses can stop it. No, I don't. I don't either. But the the problem is, is if if they get into situations where Oklahoma State starts running the football a lot, you could eat a lot of clock up. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Seven, might be right. 73, 73 and a half is where it's been. I mean, that's a. It's a lot of points. I'm going to just stay away from the over. Yeah, that's just. That's no, they so could easily bad. bust eighty. I mean, that that's not outside of the realm I mean, of possibilities. Uh, and what was LSU Texas was what forty two to thirty five. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it's it, mean, so they it, could they could do this pretty easily. Yeah, and I think LSU's defense is better than the both these teams' defenses. But it just the game flow changes that though. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's hard to say they did this, so they'll they'll do that. Um, but yeah, another I'll, big I'll game this. in Austin. I, I would say this. Texas fans are going to give me crap because I'm picking against them again two weeks in a row, two big games in Austin in a row. If if they lose these two big home games, big night games in Austin, that that is going to be a problem. Realistically, yeah. do I do I if you if I didn't believe in Gundy, and I didn't know how much Gundy has owned this rivalry last few years, I I, I would say everything in me tells you just exactly what you thought. Yeah. I, I'm trying to talk myself into making Texas be the pick here. I don't. I, I don't know what things look like in Austin 
if he loses their two first big home games. They play two games a year, and if he loses two, both of them before the, you know before you get really into league play, before you get into Oklahoma, before you yeah. get to Tech or TCU, I mean, it's, it's that, you know that's going to be tough. Yeah, uh, I am going to pick Oklahoma State to win outright here. Oh, you got okay. You got, you got State to win it too. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm taking the Cowboys. Um, whew, good gracious, that's hard. That is, yeah, that's a. This is a tough one to read. Like I, I'm, I don't think I'm betting this one, but it, if I had to go that direction, I, that's that's the way I'd go. Yep. All right, game number five is a Friday night game. The Utes, Kyle Whittingham's Utah bunch, a four point favorite at USC. Total is fifty and a half. It's Friday, eight p.m. on FS1. It's at the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, Utah. Has only been favored over USC two times. They covered both of them. They have covered three straight against USC. Aside from 2018 against Notre Dame, which they covered, USC has not been a home underdog since 2013, which is an insane streak. That's right. right. I mean, that's that's pretty crazy, but especially for as bad as that program has been at times. The, the, in that, span, that tells you the sp- the, the talent that they've had. Well, not I mean, just the talent they've got, but the state of the Pac-12. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody's been able to come in there and really challenge them. The Bear, Chris Felica, from ESPN's College Game Day, put out a tweet earlier that said something along the lines of, Clay Helton uh, has been an underdog in, what, 12 games? Or maybe it was 13 games. He's either 2-11 and 11, uh, against the spread and has not won any of them. Or it's like two and ten or whatever. It, either way, it's it's bad. Yeah, it's not good. He's not very good as an underdog. I mean, this is a bad spot. I think Utah's defense, while their numbers are not setting the world on fire, we understand how good that defensive line is, how disruptive they can be. Slovis, he got he had some problems last week. With See, BYU, man, they put up twenty-seven points. I, I understand, but he threw game. three picks. Uh, uh, True, that's that's where the uh, issue was. That's why they lost the game was the three picks. I think Utah can do a lot of the same things, and I think that they will be able to slow down USC much more so than BYU was. I I like Utah here. I'm going to go Utah minus the four. Yeah, I'd probably lay the points. I don't I don't like. Taking road favorites like that, but I'd, I'd probably take the points. I, the points. Uh, Utah's, pro- I think Utah's just the better team. Like yeah. sometimes it's just that just is what it is. They're they're poised to win this thing. So in USC schedule, at what is it? Utah now. Then they've got uh, Washington next week, and then what? Oregon the week after that, or something it's, like it's, that. Yeah, oh, no, Notre I know, Dame. I know Notre they Dame. have Washington and Oregon close. It's uh, I don't know. Do they, I don't think they play Oregon. I think I think it's Notre Dame right after that. Okay, maybe not. So yeah, they lose this one. That would move them to two and two, and then you got Washington and Notre Dame. I mean, that puts you at two and four. Yeah. Scary situation for Clay Helton, man. I got to tell you. All right, let's get into the extra points. Um, wow. A lot of lot of interesting games this this week. So we're gonna rapid fire. Okay. Through this. Air Force at Boise State on Friday night. Boise an eight-point favorite. Boise one five and one against the spread against Air Force all time. Pretty crazy. Uh, Air Force off a big win over Colorado. Boise has looked good. This could be maybe a letdown spot Friday night. You know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, how do you feel? I have no idea. No idea about this one. No, no feeling whatsoever. It, Air Force's offense is tough to prep for. Very tough to prep for. Colorado at Arizona State. Arizona State, a seven and a half point favorite coming off of a huge win in East Lansing over Michigan State. Colorado coming off of a overtime, just kind of momentum stopping loss to Air Force. Uh, This could be really close. Colorado, I'm not going to say handled, but they beat Arizona State by a touchdown last year. Uh, Colorado's still got a really good offense. They've, They've got some playmakers. That is one thing that Arizona State did not have to worry about with Michigan State. I think Colorado is going to be able to score a little bit on these guys. It may not be much, but they will be able to put up points. 
Washington, a six-point favorite at BYU. And there's a lot of money on Washington right now, right? I don't know. 80, there it is right line. there. 86% of the bets are on Washington, and the line actually went down. And that's always a scary proposition, right? Yeah. Because it, it kind of means that Vegas wants you to bet Washington. I'm probably going to roll with them because I think – I think Washington is just that much better. Washington beat BYU 35-7 to last year in Seattle. Uh, Washington, you know, coming off of that cow loss, I, I think they're, they're fired up. They understand we cannot lose again. Jacob Eason, I think, finds a way to get this done. I think he will be able to perform better against that BYU defense. But remember, this is the fourth straight Power 5 team that BYU has had to play. They've That's gone right. across the country and back. Uh, they're home underdogs again. I, I think I like Washington in this spot. Kentucky at Mississippi State. Right now it's a six-point line. Both these teams coming off pretty brutal losses. Yeah. Um, Kentucky's, I feel like, was maybe more excruciating. Mississippi State, Tommy Stevens, quarterback, still day-to-day. We don't know exactly what's going to happen there. Garrett Schrader may be the starter. Uh, either way, I think there's just there's problems in Starkville. And... I will say Kentucky, this this east-west rivalry that they've got with Mississippi State, the home team has won every year. And they have really dominated. I was just about at to home say they, every year. they've won pretty pretty easily. Pretty every year. pretty handily. Yeah. Um but man, I just I don't trust Mississippi State at all here. I like Kentucky. I think they're pissed off. The the way that their guys have talked since losing that game to Florida. So frustrating. They are. They should, they had that game won. Yeah, they are fired up. Michigan State, minus 9.5 at Northwestern. Again, rolling through really quickly. Uh, the Spartans, just an ugly loss. You know, it should have had a, another chance at a field goal. Not that we know that they would have made it, but at least they should have had the other opportunity uh, over Arizona State. But they lose at home there. Now they got to go on the road to Northwestern, who loves covering as a dog. Uh, well, they just like covering and winning against Big Ten teams. Yeah. I mean, that last that's year. Just, that's just what they do. Last year went over against non conference competition Und, and undefeated, undefeated Big Ten. Well, aside from Michigan, but went eight and one, uh, seven and one, whatever it was. Seven they, and one. They lost to Michigan. Oh, that's they right. I don't, I don't remember them playing Michigan. They lost twenty to seventeen at home. Okay, I missed that. So, um, but yeah, they Northwestern at home is a scary proposition. This I'm offense, not, I'm not worried about the Northwestern situation. I don't know that Michigan State should be a ten point favorite against anybody. I don't. I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I just they just don't look good. No, when they go up against not good defenses, well, that's one thing. Little teams that they can push around, yeah. But almost anybody in the Big Ten outside of Rutgers. They shouldn't be able to push around. Well, even even Rutgers, they only beat by three last year. Yeah, but it, their offense was was yeah. even worse last season. Yeah, I'm not worried about last year. Yeah, uh, Northwestern in these spots is is almost just love, money. We love them, absolutely love them. Oregon minus ten and a half at Stanford. Stanford looks awful, awful. Yeah, uh, they're bad. And how Oregon's only a ten point or ten and a half point favorite? I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of public money on the Ducks here. Uh, Mario Cristobal, if he's going to get it done, man, you, you better beat Stanford this year. Like, it, And I understand it's on the road. Stanford coming back from going cross-country. I mean, man, UCF put them down last week, and it was not a pretty sight whatsoever. Cal plus two at Ole Miss. The Bears got to go across the country to play an 11 a.m. game in Oxford. It's going to be like the seventh circle of hell in Oxford. Yeah, it's going to be 100 degrees, humidity at like 98%, just ugly. Now, I don't think that Ole Miss is very good, but, man, this is bad situational football for Cal. We, uh, I just, we just we disagree on this game. Um, I'm not picking it as a gambling pick, but I've I, got it as I one. Think, I think Ole Miss is one bad half against Memphis away from being a 3 no football team. And, and you might be right. Before the season started, we were flipped. You had Ole Miss winning this game, and I had Cal winning this game. And today, Cal is better than I thought. The Cal is fine. Cal hasn't really changed a whole lot. Ole Miss is a lot better than what I thought they were. 
and my expectations were pretty low. And I, I think they're going to give him hell. And I think that he, I think those boys from the West Coast, they they might just fall they out. They're going to fall apart because it's going to suck. Last one: Appalachian State at North Carolina. North Carolina is a three-point favorite. That is down from three and a half. Uh, North Carolina got their first loss last week. They looked like complete garbage in the first half, and I think that's the way to bet if you're going to do it is you take App State in the first half. In the first, their first half uh, have been bad every week. Every week, North but Carolina looks like kids. trash. Yeah, they they are the comeback kids. Sam Howell looked good again last week. Uh, not in the first half, obviously, because it, none of them look good in the first if, half. If they played a fifth half or fifth quarter, man, I, I, I think I'll uh, win that game. I'll tell you this: the metrics actually have App State favored in this game. And I told you this before the season. Yeah. Like, I I, I think North Carolina probably going to win. Yeah. But, man, I, this this seems like a rough spot because North Carolina's got Clemson next week. You know, they're coming off of a loss last week. Uh, I think App State, they, they are looking to get a big-time win, kind of the same way UCF did last week. This is, you know, the in-state team. And so that uh, that is going to wrap it up for the college football preview show as always, go over to winningcureseverything.com. You can find more information on us over there. Hit subscribe on YouTube, whatever your favorite podcast app is. Make sure you go to tunicatravel.com. We will see you guys again on the Gambling Picks show. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.